A man who was briefly in line to receive more than $150 million from the estate of casino billionaire Howard Hughes has returned to Nevada. When Hughes died in 1976, a ferocious search was launched to find his will. Eventually, one version of the will surfaced. The so-called Mormon will left one-fourth of the Hughes fortune to the LDS Church and one-sixteenth to an affable everyman named Melvin Dumar. The will was eventually declared a forgery and Dumar was a laughing stock for for years. Now, new evidence suggests he may have been telling the truth all along. George Knapp of the I-Team caught up with Melvin Dumar and has this update. Because I was headed through the desert driving 60 miles an hour when this old man flagged me down. I said, where are you going? He said, Las Vegas. We'll jump in and I'll drive you into town. That, in a musical Dumar nutshell, is the event that changed Melvin Dumar's life forever and nearly destroyed in December 1967, Dumar was a working man on his way to L.A. to track down his first wife who'd run off. Just south of the Cottontail Ranch brothel in central Nevada, he pulled over to relieve himself. But I think we're right here. Years later, he returned to the exact spot and reenacted what he saw for a TV pilot called True Vegas. He was laying in the middle of a dirt road right off the highway, about 100 yards or so off the highway. When I found him, I thought I'd found a dead body. And so I, uh, I picked him up and put him in the car and took him to Vegas. What happened? The story of that fateful drive was told later in an Oscar-winning film, Melvin and Howard. Strange old weird old wino laying out in the middle of the desert. Dumar chatted with the disheveled old derelict, sang him a few original songs, and even gave him some pocket money when dropping him off as requested behind the Sands Hotel. During the drive, Dumar says he told the old guy he had tried but failed to get a job with Hughes Aviation. He told me that he knew something about Hughes Aircraft because he owned it. <laughs> That's how he said it? Yeah, he said, he said oh, I, I, I'm familiar with that. I think it's his words. I'm familiar with that because I own it. And I thought, yeah, right. <laughs> sure you do. You, you look like a bum. You, I thought you'd be somebody from Skid Row. That, that was my impression of him. He didn't make it up. Dumar's brother Ray, who runs the town of Gabs, remembers Melvin telling him about the odd encounter. Well, as soon as he got back, he told the story to me. And it was a couple of years after that before, it, before it, Hughes died. And this is the person you saw? Yeah, that's the person I saw right there. That's it wasn't until Hughes died nine years later that the world would learn he really did look like the bum Dumar had rescued in the desert. Hughes' death set off a scramble because no will could be found, not until someone showed up at Dumar's gas station in Utah and dropped off the so-called Mormon will, which left one-sixteenth of Hughes' fortune day? to Melvin. It set off a vicious legal fight over the Hughes estate and nearly destroyed Dumar's life. For the most part, it was, it was like a nightmare. And I was just totally got paranoid, you know, because I'd, because of, you know, helping him out, I used to get, you know, death threats and, and everything else. I asked the attorneys, I said, can't we just kind of opt out of all this? Because I knew it was going to be a circus. Melvin's wife, Bonnie, says she also wondered in the beginning if her husband had forged the will, but quickly figured out there's no way he could have pulled it off. In a highly publicized hearing in Las Vegas, Dumar was raked over the coals and the will rejected as a forgery. I picked you up, drove you into town. For years, Melvin was a national punchline, but he tried to make the best of it with a nightclub act and media opportunities. As a thank you, he willed me $150 million. Take care of yourself, will you? The success of the movie Melvin and Howard reintroduced the affable Dumar to the world. At first, I thought he was a coup. Then, a former FBI agent named Gary Magnuson started looking into the case and found considerable evidence that Howard Hughes probably did leave his hotel suite at times and was seen by numerous people at the Cottontail brothel. Las Vegas businessman Robert Dero revealed to Magnuson that he flew Hughes in a plane to see a working girl named Sonny, whose portrait hung in the Cottontail's parlor. When last we spoke to the Dumars eight years ago, 
ago, they just launched a new legal action to revisit the will, but an appeals court ruled against them. These days, Melvin and Bonnie live in Pahrump. Melvin still travels the back roads to deliver meat to rural communities, and he still writes songs. <laughs> oh, but hear my warning. If you're driving through the desert, never stop and give anyone a ride. Because if they're rich and they leave you in their will, it's guaranteed to screw up your life like mine. <laughs> George Knapp, 8 News Now. <laughs> A new movie project in the works will reunite Melvin Dumar and the actor who portrayed him back in 1980. That part of the story tomorrow.